All oh, right, so I went ahead and created our new climatic project. You know how to do this by now. Go ahead and do that. And as usual, I'm going to set things up here. I'm going to delete everything that we don't need because we always like to do things our own way and you should always strive for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say import here because we need that material package there. I'm going to say void main. We all need this and it's always fun. Run app. I'm going to pass in new say new material app say app so give it a title call this climatic and for home I'm just gonna go ahead and say new climatic that's the class that we're gonna be calling and put in all the widgets that we need very cool. Obviously, we don't have it there yet. That's not a problem. And while I'm here, let's go ahead into our lib. Right click, say new. I'm going to create a new directory. Call it UI. And this indeed is where I'm going to put a new Dart file. I'm going to call this climatic as such. And there we go. So, what I'm going to do here, of course, I'm going to import material such but that's important and I'm gonna go ahead and create a stateful widget class called climatic now we could have gone and say class as we always do and call the climatic and so forth that's totally fine but we are at the point now where we should start learning other things such as um, shortcut that shortcut keywords that we get from our IntelliJ IDE here. Okay, so one of the cool things about using an IDE such as this one here is the empowerment that we get from a developer's perspective, right? Because the idea here is to speed up our development process. So let's take advantage of that. It's always a good habit to get into. So if you want to create a stateful widget or a stateless widget, depending, you can just go ahead and start typing ST look at this you can say stf that would be for stateful widget look if you go ahead and hit enter look at that it gives you the whole boilerplate of the stateful widget all you have to do now is just name it and as you do that it also once goes ahead and puts everything together for you the names the name of the class and so forth and that's it nice very cool and we are done there. And now, well, we kind of have to import. Uh, let's see. UI climatic like that. Once you do that, we should be good. Here you notice that as a boilerplate, it just returns a container. Well, as you know, we want to return something more than just a container, right? We want to return a scaffold because that gives us the boilerplate code that we want to create material apps okay so that means i can app put an app bar here say new app bar and i can pass in a title new text and call this climatic let's see can give a background can say colors uh, white as such okay and then I'm gonna put some actions now the reason why I'm gonna put actions is because I want to put a widget at the top that will be the sandwich icon which we saw in our application right so if we go back let's see I just say enter there okay let me show you real quick so this is what we are going to add, this little sandwich there. All right, so, but before we even do go that further, so at least we have something right now, I'm gonna go ahead and add the assets that we need, because we'll need some images. So I'm gonna go to the top of our project, right click, say new, one new directory, call this images. You can call whatever you want, but images is always uh, makes sense and then I'm gonna copy a few images that don't worry you will have all of these assets for you to use and on top of that you may ask where did you get these assets well before we even go there let me go ahead and copy all those assets that we are talking about that we need that way you have them 
So I'm going to copy V. There we go. We have three of them. We have this one, which is just an icon. We have this umbrella. It's a big, as you can see, it's a bigger PNG, 1000 by 1498. And we have this one here, which is very cool. There's a lady walking on a very snowy road. It's very, very cool. Where do I get all of this stuff? Well, most all of these images, if you ever want to find images that are inspirational and are great for your application, you go to unsplash.com like this. This is the place I love. So now the search is programming because that's what I usually go search for. <laughs> but you can come here. This is the main place. You see all these images are very high quality and amazing images you can use for whatever you want. But one thing that you should always do is to thank the people that have created taking these pictures. That is the best thing you can do. That is just a polite thing to do. And we always want to be polite, right? Okay, so here you can go, let's say you want to search for weather, just like what, do I, what I did before. There we go. So look at this, all of these great images. Okay, and I like to get images that are already set up for mobile development. You can see the long ones, such as this one, right? They are long. You see this image here? You can see this is the one I got. There's this one, very cool too. Okay, so you can scroll down. Oh, there we go. There's the, the, this is one of the images also that I got. If you click on that, then you're going to be able to see a bigger version. You can keep clicking and see how big it is. All right. And the cool thing is you can also go ahead and say download for free. Once you click download, it will start downloading at the bottom here. You can see. But you notice there's this pop up that comes up. So it's not a requirement, but it's always a good thing to do, right? Say so it's credit isn't required, but is appreciated and allows photographers to gain exposure. So if whenever you use this, just make sure to uh, say thank you by adding a credit or badge, right? So if you are making an application or a web app, whatever you're making, and you use any of these pictures, it's really polite. It's really nice if you could accredit the owner or the person who took the picture. Okay, so always, always do that. Because, you know, if we take something from somebody, we get something for somebody, we always say thank you. That's what grandma and mom always want you to do. <laughs> All right? Great. Perfect. So there you go. You have this awesome tool, the awesome place you can get stuff. And the next thing that I also encourage you to use, because some of these images are really big images, right? So uh, as you know, memory in mobile application is a huge deal. So if we can always minimize our images, make them smaller in weight, if you will, it's always a good idea because that will help us in the long run. The other page that I want you to know and bookmark is called tiny png it's this one here tiny png and you will see there's this tiny panda there all you do you take the image that we got right and just drop them inside here and then in the background they will be compressed but will keep the quality size will be smaller which is going to be lighter and better for us to use in our web applications mobiles whatever else you want to do so always do that whenever you get an image cool so these are the tools that you should put in your toolbox and always use them okay very cool so we have all this great stuff i'm going to get rid of this say we have those images already and again you will have these images um this no problem. But if you want to add your own images, that's totally fine. In fact, that's what I would suggest you do, because then you have your own application. All right, there we go. Get rid of all of this so we can start talking stuff. Now, you know, because we have the images, we added images. This is not all we have to go to our pub spec YAML. I think that's what they call it. And then we have to point to those images. What do you do? You come down here where it says assets, right? It even tells you how to do this. Because we have three images, yes, we have to do for each one. So if you have 20 images, we have to go and do the same thing. There must be some way you can put all of them. But in this case, that's what we need to do. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say assets, just like they say here, like that. I'm gonna say images forward slash. I'm gonna start with light underscore rain that PNG. Make sure it's exactly exactly the same. Okay, say enter. Keep doing so images. I want the umbrella that PNG. Enter images. What is the last one? White snow dot PNG. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click this package is set. And if all goes well, you should have no problem. All right, very cool. And I'm going to go back here. And there we go. So now our images are indeed correct. Our images are all set and we have our um, our stateful widget doing great and everything is just awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a quick run here so at least we can see uh, something. This is for our gratification, if you will. So I'm going to run. Oh, it says I need to put the dependency just to do okay like that. Click that. That's fine. Okay, let's stop this and run again because I was in the middle of something. I already have my emulator running here. Oh, looks like we have insufficient storage. All right, let's just get rid of stuff that we don't need because I have too many apps. It happens. Let me get, delete all of these. Okay, let's see if that works now. Run again. And there we go. Very cool. We have just a white background, but we know that this is working. Okay, we should have a title here, but because it's white, we're not going to be able to see it. That's totally fine. Great. All right, so in the next video, we are going to start putting together our user interface so that we can then start getting all the information. All right. Perfect. I'll see you next.